Hello friends, this is Dr. Pooja Devan, your gynecologist yet again with you in the second episode on the topic of thyroid problems in pregnancy. The last discussion was left at the point wherein we were diagnosed to have a thyroid problem in pregnancy and we were to take the path forward. Well, you need to now after being diagnosed to have a thyroid problem in pregnancy or were a patient of thyroid pre-existing before pregnancy have to have serial monitoring of your thyroid hormone through blood test. We are aware about thyroid function tests, but we need not do the entire panel. We can just do the TSH and the free T4 hormone, which has to be done every four weeks. That is monthly up to 20 weeks. That is five months. And there and after we can do it and monitor it four to six weeks till the time we deliver. And once we deliver, we will again check you at around six weeks. The question then is, what is the treatment? The treatment is simple tablets, whether you have hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism. Hyperthyroidism, mind you, usually the medication given in the non-pregnant state is not the favorable medication to be continued when planning a pregnancy or when found to be pregnant. So the medication has to change because it has negative detrimental body anomaly forming side effects on the baby. But if it is hypothyroidism, that is you have a thyroid deficiency, which is more common, then the same medicine continues before and there and after the dose may of course vary. So what is the medication for hypothyroidism? You must have heard about thyroxine. Well, these are white colored tablets, usually in a brown bottle. Did you ever think why it's a brown bottle? Because the sun destroys the efficacy of these tablets. We have to pop in one tablet once a day on an empty stomach right in the morning and then continue to be empty stomach for half an hour to one hour till we have our first meal of the day that is the breakfast. Now some people ask me, I mean I can't do this. I mean I have to get up in the morning, I have to rush to work, you expect me to pop in a tablet and wait for one hour. Can there not be an alternative time? Well, a prolonged fasting overnight with the medicine taken in the morning with a one hour gap increases the absorption of the thyroid tablet. Now if you want to change it and you want to take it at bedtime then it has to be at least a three hour gap between your last meal and when you're going off to sleep that's when you take it but again we will have to readjust the dosage there might just be a need for a higher dose and can you take this thyroid medication along with iron and calcium it's so easy to pop in everything in one go isn't it but no you can't you have to take the thyroid medicine separate from iron and separate from calcium as well you can't take iron and calcium together as well there has to be a four hour gap between iron and calcium as well so the requirement of this hormone generally increases throughout pregnancy. So you wonder, I mean, I started off with a dose as small as this and I am on this dose. I mean, is this medication going to just stick on to me and am I taking such high doses? Is it really worrisome? No, not really. Let's first understand what is the commercial doses available. So the bottles will have dosage of 25, 50, 75, 100, 125, 150 micrograms. There could be doses like 12.5. 25, 37.5, 50, 60, 7.5, 75, 87.5, and so on and so forth. Now, if the dose is increasing, you could be at 25 and you've escalated to 150. Once you deliver, the requirement for this hormone steeply falls down. So, once you deliver, we half the dose. So if you were taking 50, we make it 25. We ask you to come at six weeks. We do the test again. If the hormones look good, we remove that dose as well. And then after six weeks, we again test. Now, can it be removed for everybody? No, if you were already having an autoimmune disorder or you were already on medications before pregnancy, maybe not. But for most, it's welcome news. It doesn't have to stick to you. As far as the baby is concerned, we do the test when the baby is born, but it can be falsely positive. We do the TSH test. Again, we do the test at six weeks because the mother's blood and the hormones, which could be the camouflaging factor, confusing factor when it's delivered, can be confounding. And so when we do it at six weeks, we have the right answer. 
with regards diet lifestyle modification i mean there's a lot of debate whether really it affects and does it benefit but yes yeah, some exercise is always welcome because you see we are gaining weight any which ways in pregnancy so there's always this confusion do i have a thyroid problem or i don't because pregnancy itself can give you faster heart rate palpitations and weight gain on the other hand uh, thyroid can also give you that particularly in hyperthyroidism faster heart rate and weight gain in hypothyroidism so doing test is really mandatory but does diet really have a role so there are these food items which are considered beneficial in the sense that they will increase your thyroid hormone and there are those which should not be taken because they decrease your thyroid hormone so let's figure out whether we have scientific evidence for this so really no but then yes refrain and addition of food items is always welcome so if you were to avoid cabbage and broccoli then the hormone deficiency can be tidied over because they decrease the hormone on the other hand if you take whole wheat flour and not refined if you take egg white which is high protein if you take omega 3 rich ingredients like evening primrose oil cod liver oil and even vitamin d3 it's found to be facilitatory to increase the thyroid hormone so well this is the discussion today about thyroid issues in pregnancy i hope that uh, the discussion today has been beneficial and uh, you would have liked the session this is me dr pooja devan your gynecologist we'll be back again with you in yet another episode with yet another topic of importance meanwhile if you've liked this episode please do put in a like share it with your friends write down in the comment section and subscribe to the channel equally you can see my helpline whatsapp number you can put in a message or call there and my clinic will respond to you with the, for your queries and sort them out for you equally you can see my whatsapp number and my email you can drop in a message or call there with your query and you will get a prompt reply from my clinic we'll be happy to help you see you yet again bye bye thank you take care